Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the Solomon A. Mechanics M1 paper, which uh, corresponds to question number one from my end of topic worksheet, um, number five on forces and friction. Uh, this question here um, tells us about this large block of mass 50 kilograms being pulled on a rough horizontal ground by means of a rope attached to the block. The tension in the rope is 200 newtons and it makes an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal. Under these conditions, the block is on the point of moving. On the point of moving. So it's not moving, it's on the point of moving. Modeling the block as a particle, show the coefficient of friction between the block and the ground is 0.424 correct to three significant figures. Okay, so now some of the important points here, one of the very most important points here is that the block is on the point of moving, meaning it's in equilibrium. Okay, it's in equilibrium. So the resultant force on this thing is zero. However, it's on the point of moving, so we have reached what's called F max. The maximum possible value of friction has been uh, reached, and um, any increase in the force or maybe a change in the angle, um, make it less, for example, would cause the block to move. All right, so that means it's on the limit of being in equilibrium, which means that the f value of the friction, F max, has been reached, which is mu times R. Okay, so this has been reached as of because of this sentence here. If that sentence wasn't there, that phrase wasn't there, then we could not say that F max has been reached. But as F as it's on the point of moving, that means F max has been reached. So it says modeling the block as a particle show that the coefficient of friction between the block and the ground is 0 0.424, correct to three significant figures. So let's draw the forces acting on this block. Now the forces acting on this block are its weight and also the reaction of the surface that it's on. Those are the forces acting on the block. So you have the reaction force and you have its weight and it tells us that it's a 50 kilogram um, block. So it's 50 times G is its the force acting on it um, from its weight. So these are the forces acting on the block. I'm not considering all the forces in the whole system. I'm not considering the forces acting on the ground, on the reaction, or whatever. I'm only considering the forces acting on the block. And there's also the frictional force acting, which is opposing the motion, which would be, which would take place in that direction if it was to move. And that's reached its maximum value, F max, I'll put Fm here. That's actually been reached. Um, we also, what I'm going to also draw in here are the components of the weight. Uh, sorry, components of this 200 force, 200 newton force, parallel and perpendicular to the direction of motion. Okay, so these these are the components of this 200 newtons force. Okay, parallel and perpendicular to the. Whoops, what am I doing? Let me just make those a bit smaller. Okay, so you have this, which is the component of this 200 newton force in the horizontal direction, which is basically going to be this adjacent side, or you can say you go into the angle, so it's 200 times cosine 40 newtons, and this is going away from the angle, or you could say we're looking for the opposite side, so this is going to be 200 times sine 40. So those are the components of this force, par parallel and perpendicular to the direction that this thing would move. So now we're trying to find here the coefficient of friction. We know that F max, which has been achieved, is equal to mu r. So if I can find what F max is and I can find what r is, I can then find what mu is. So let's start with r. We know r is found by resolving the forces acting vertically. So the, the mistake that a lot of people make here is they say r is equal to the weight. But in this case, there's also the component of this um, force acting upwards as well. So R, we can say R plus 200 times the sine of 40 is equal to 50 G. So we can say R is equal to 50 G minus 200 sine 40. I'm going to leave it like that for now so I have exact values. And then if we resolve parallel to the plane, 
we know that it's in equilibrium, okay, because it's not moving. So we can say that 200 times cosine of 40, okay, that's the force acting in this direction, the component in the parallel to the plane, is equal to F max. Okay, so therefore we can say that mu is F max over R, okay, so we can say that's 200 times cosine 40 divided by 50 times, I'll put it as 9.8 now, minus 200 sine 40. I've kept everything in its exact form, so I don't have to do any rounding until the end. So now this should give us our answer for mu. So we're going to have 200 cosine 40. Make sure we're in degree mode. Yes, we are. Divided by 50 times 9.8. Okay, minus 200 times sine 40. And that should give us the answer, which is 0 0.42388. 0 0.42388. And we have to show that it rounds to 0 0.424 to 3SF. So we round this to 3SF. And yes, exactly, it gives us 0 0.424. And that's the answer. We've shown how that occurs by finding F max and finding R and then dividing them to give you the coefficient of friction. So there's the answer to part A of this question. The key phrase here, the block is on the point of moving, meaning it's in equilibrium. So, you know, the friction is equal to this force, but the friction has reached its maximum value, which is given by mu times R. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Okay, now for part B. It says, um, the angle with the horizontal at which the rope is being pulled is reduced to 30 degrees. So that's been now reduced to 30 degrees. Ignoring air resistance and assuming that the tension is the same in the rope and the coefficient of friction remains unchanged, which is 0.424, find the acceleration of the block. So now, basically, as the angle has reduced, that means the component of the force in this direction is going to be now um, a bigger force. Therefore, it's now going to be moving because you know, uh, the friction could not increase anymore. So basically, we do the same thing. Okay, let's just um, resolve this force in this direction. It's going to be different now because the angle has changed. And in that direction, okay, you've got the reaction force, which is acting up, the weight acting down. And you've got the frictional force, which is its maximum value which is F max. We know that F max has been achieved and F max will still be there because it's now, um, you know, it's moving. So F max is still there. So the weight of this block was 50 G. That's 50 G Newtons. And the reaction force up here, um, we've got this, which is now 200 times cosine 30, the horizontal component of that force. And this is 200 times sine 30, which is the vertical component of that force. So now we've got to resolve the forces Let's resolve them vertically first. We can say that R plus 200 times sine 30 is equal to 50 G. Okay. And that will help us find what R is. Let's work out what that is. That's going to be 50 G minus 200 sine 30. 50 times 9.8 minus 200 times sine 30. Now we know sine 30 is a half. So it's going to be 50 50 times 9.8 minus 200 times sine 30. That gives us 390. So R is equal to 390 Newtons. Okay, and if we resolve um, horizontally now, we know that this thing is going to be accelerating in this direction now. Okay, and we can see that we can now use F equals MA. We know that the resultant force is not zero anymore. So what we can say is, we can say 200 cosine 30, as it's going in that direction, minus F max is equal to the mass times acceleration. Okay, so we got 200 times cosine 30 minus mu times R equals the mass, which is 50 times A. So we can find out what A is here, So because this is 200. I'll leave it in this form so we can... And, you know, we don't have to round. 200 cosine 30 
minus mu. Mu, remember, is 0.424, rounded to 3SF. Okay, 0.424 times R, which we know is 390. Okay, divided by 50 is going to be A. Just rearranging that equation. So acceleration is going to be... Let's work this out. We have 200 times cosine of 30 minus 0 0.424. Whoops. 0 0.424 times 390 divided by 50. So that gives us 0 0.1569. 0.1569. Now we can leave the answer to 3SF or 2SF as we use G. I'll just write it to, to, to 3SF. So 0 0.157 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of this block once, um, you know, the, the angle of the rope has reduced to 30 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. So this is a question which involves both statics from part A and um, dynamics from part b okay but both of them involve the, the concept of friction which on the point of moving when it's moving in both cases the f max has been achieved but in this second case it's actually moving so f equals ma is to be used whereas in the first equation or the first situation it hasn't moved so the resultant force is zero so you know acceleration is zero so therefore you know you, you can say f max and that force will be the same in that case Right, so there's the answer to question number, um, this is actually question number, what was it, five, I think? Five from the Solomon A paper, um, M1, and this is question one from my end of topic worksheet on forces of friction. Um, other questions from this particular um, Solomon A paper, once I get to answer them, will be in this playlist over here from M1 Solomon A. Other questions from this particular end of topic worksheet forces and friction can be found in this playlist over here and questions generally to do with forces and friction can be found in the playlist over here um from you know other past papers and what whatnot and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon